Rub up your engines! Okay, we got a 2007 Tundra. I'm gonna show you stuff that can be done to them to make them even better than they were in the first place. Now, the guy bought it used years ago, 25 grand with about 88,000 miles, and it started out as a regular old Tundra SR5, but I guess it wasn't fast enough for the original owner. So, he took it to Toyota, and you can see the stickers here, TRD, and they put a supercharger on them at the Toyota dealer. So the original owner had that put on. Now, these engines are generally extremely overbuilt. They can take a supercharger. I often tell people, if you're gonna put a supercharger on a car, you better make sure that engine's in solid shape. Like, don't go out and buy a car that's got 180,000 miles and throw a supercharger, you'll probably blow the engine. But the guy did it soon after he bought the vehicle. So, it has 135,000 miles on it. Now, it doesn't burn oil, runs perfectly fine, of course. The gas hogs are big giant trucks. That's the way that it goes. Now, he's decided to add stuff himself. Yeah, like my grandson's Tundra. He's put on these nice King Off-Road racing shocks. And unlike my grandson, he did it right and it's leveled. <laughs> it isn't sitting way up in the air. He leveled it up. Now, it also came with this. The supercharger guy put the big old cow catcher bumper on it. And as we look inside, he needs new seat covers. That's how I say, buy the good seat covers like in my wife's car. These cheaper ones, they rip, they tear. I mean, look at her matrix. These are seat covers and they're nice. And a guy brought a Tacoma the other day that had these Dr. Carnow seat covers. They were phenomenal. Now they weren't cheap. They were close to 300 bills for the full set. But unfortunately, they don't make them for matrixes. They're more a late model truck at the Dr. Carnow guys. Totally heartbroken when I contacted the company and they said, oh, well, we don't have those yet. Maybe we will in the future, but they don't. So those were the best ones I've ever seen, the Dr. Carnow, but it's a very limited amount of vehicles that they make the seats for. See, he's put a nice racing solid aluminum radiator. That was the original one, he figures what the heck, the old ones are plastic, this thing is going to last forever. Now you might think, well he replaced the aluminum radiator with the aluminum radiator. Well, the aluminum radiators that come with are aluminum only partially. This is all aluminum, which is fine. The ones they come with that they call aluminum radiators, actually, the aluminum part's okay. The problem is the top and the bottom tank are made out of, guess what, plastic. And plastic doesn't like what? Heat. So over time, it gets brittle, it cracks, and you gotta replace the radiator. Well, this isn't gonna get hot because the melting temperature of aluminum is well over the boiling temperature of coolant. Unless there's an atomic explosion somewhere, well, <laughs> this radiator is gonna keep going. So we'll check it out inside and we'll ignore the ragtag seat cover here. So yes, it does have a key. I would much rather have a key. So no mobilizer key. You know it's gonna start. Got 135,553 miles on it. But lo and behold, the check engine light's on, so let's check that out. So we'll get the towel, plug it in under here, turn on the key, take off my gloves. Even though it says touch screen, that's baloney. You can't touch it. Don't listen to advertisers, it's a bunch of crap. Tundra, North America, 07 with a 3 URFE V8 engine. Do a scan to see what's happening. Now we'll do a complete diagnosis. And while that's doing its thing, you can see he's added the Kenwood stereo. The Toyota stereo is kind of crappy, so he's modernized the thing here. And it's a Tundra, so it's got big old armrests with a lot of space inside to store stuff. Really nice big back seat. Two-wheel drive, four-wheel high, four-wheel low. Now here we go. Engine and ETC, there's three faults. Well, let's see what they are. Circuit A. Secondary air injection relay circuit four. Secondary air injection system relay circuit A. There's always halves of these things. It's a design flaw, but I don't know how Toyota got away with not having to fix them all free. The air injection pumps on these things get funky as they age. Now the air injection pump is part of the anti-pollution equipment. Back in the day when I was young and they started doing all that crap, they used to have external mechanical pumps that ran off and belts on American cars. They were forever breaking. And on these, it's more or less a design flaw. Now as we look through all that, we will see the air injection pump costs $561.52. It unbolts and bolts in. The labor's only one hour, and it take a snail to do it in an hour. You could probably do it in 25 minutes if you wanted, but you'd have to buy that super expensive part, and 
why bother? Secondary air injection, it adds extra air to supposedly make it pollute less. La la la. He doesn't have to worry about it now. A lot of this stuff's kind of planned obsolescence, and Toyota knows they had a problem with these things, but they didn't do anything about it. And considering that this thing has a supercharger on it for all that power, I mean, a little bit extra pollution, tiny amount, isn't going to amount to a hill of beans. Now, just your giggles will erase the codes, but it certainly will come back because. That's a notorious flaw in these things as they age. Realize it's all a bunch of plastic crap. And it just breaks when it ages. So let's look at live data. And we can see the long term fuel trim is 3.1%. I mean it's added a tiny amount of fuel because it's running a little bit lean. But let me tell you something. A Tundra with this kind of mileage, you're better off with it running a little bit lean. It's not shaking, it runs fine. Running a little bit lean, you get a little bit better gas mod. There's enough gas as it is. So we'll look at more. One is perfect. You can see it's only off a tiny amount, 0.995, sometimes 1.004, almost perfect. Catalyst temperatures, look, almost exactly the same. They're exactly the same there, and they're exactly the same there, following each other. Misfire counts, one through eight, zero, 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 no misfire. So let's take it for a spin. But before I do, he's got this annoying squeak has been chasing for years, so let's figure out what it is. Electronic stethoscopes and headphones come in handy. Well, it looks like he's gonna live with this squeak. Come right here. It's been making a noise, he said, about a year and a half. <laughs> It's not like it's got play, it's not wobbling. It'll often get pulley bearing noise a little here and there, and it does go away. If it came permanently, you'd probably take it all apart, put a new one in. So it on goes good. And the reverse, didn't come with one, but he hooked us up, it works pretty good. And away we go, it's a big four by four, so we don't care about that lump. Made the sunglasses rattle in the front, but these are big, full size trucks. Got it used, all that TRD supercharger stuff was put on by the previous owner, so obviously it's held up quite well. So here we go to the little highway, we'll wait till it clears out and see what this supercharged Tundra V8 can do. People to the right, now there's people to the left. Looks like we're going to have a clearance soon. Man, here we go. Listen to that supercharger. It spools up nice. Gee, I thought my grandson's Tundra was fast. This supercharger really blows this thing out of the water. I realized it wasn't made with this. This is a Bolton. They put it on at the Toyota dealer, but the truck wasn't built with the supercharger. It was bolted on. You can put these things on if you want that much power. Kind of turns this into a sleeper truck because it doesn't say anything on the outside. It's just a normal Toyota Tundra. <laughs> Nobody would know until they started to race this thing. Oh, here we go again. We'll step on the gas. Whoa, this baby takes off. Look at that supercharger. Gee, I'd like to have one for the sound alone. <laughs> I like that sound. But at the same time, it is the big old Toyota V8 with the timing chain. It can handle this supercharger. It's not like you're putting it on a little bitty engine. It's going to blow up. This thing has had it on for 130 something thousand miles. It still runs perfectly strong. Doesn't burn oil. They're well built engines. They can take a supercharger. You don't have to build them up. So all I have to say is, Toyota, you screwed up with your new Tundras putting a twin turbo V6. The supercharged V8 would blow it off the road. It's running forever. Custer mine has one in Tennessee. He's thinking about getting rid of it because he's pulling his taco truck with it. It gets worse gas mods than his V8 did. So, an interesting sleeper truck. You can supercharge these things. You can do whatever you want to them. There's all kinds of parts available. And basically, if you know anything about trucks, they can almost always run forever just by changing the oil and filter <laughs> often and doing minor repairs here and there. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Scott Van Street says, I have low oil pressure light coming on every time I brake or turn. When you turn and when you brake, the oil in your engine sloshes. When you brake, it's going to slosh forward. When you turn, it's going to slosh sideways. If you are low on oil, it will do that because then it sucks air and the oil pressure gets low. Or if you have a gummed up oil return strainer, there's a little strainer that takes the big chunks out of the oil the neck goes into the oil pump to feed it to pump the oil. If you're low on oil, change your oil and filter, put new oil in it, right? But 
Let's say your oil's old and gunky. What you want to do is you want to flush it out. You want to get all the flush out. My friend Bernie in Albuquerque's got that ATS engine flush. You put it in, rev it up to like 1800 RPM for 20, 30 minutes with a fan in front of the car. Then you change the oil and filter, and that will get most of that kind of crud out. That's what you want to do. You want to have it flushed out, and then new oil put in, because if it's clogged up, then when you take a corner, it's clogged. It doesn't have as much weight of oil, and then it can't put the oil pressure up. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.